Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR Heat 5 Next Gen Mod Career Mode here on the channel. Fresh off of a lot of fun racing now as we came off of Mid-Ohio with an opportunity to surprisingly win. But we saw Joey Logano, however, become the first multi-time winner this season with a strategy call here now as we were landing in the Richmond, Virginia area here. A beautiful area, by the way, Richmond is. And it's very close to the city. One of the more urban racetracks on the NASCAR account. Uh, so they got great access to this track and to the city in one go. Perfect. Now, as we were ready, though, uh, to get rolling for this weekend here in practice at this Toyota Owners 400, we got the Money Lion uh, livery actually on the car this weekend. Not quite sure how this one's going to go. It could be very hit or miss at Richmond, even when you're in a five-star car. But we're in a four-star car, so I'm not quite sure exactly what to expect. Refresh off of a little bit of beef with Ross Chastain in the last episode. It has been sorted. He got me one time. I got him back in the same race, so I can confirm it's, it's already settled. Now, here we are, though, completing a few laps in this Friday practice, and the car was uh, very unpredictable. It was kind of loose, and then one corner would be really tight, so I didn't quite know what to expect to see me even hitting the outside while they're in practice. Not what you want to do there as we head down into turn one, letting that 48 go past us, but I made a few laps, and then we brought it back into the pits and, well, called it a practice here on Friday. So, overall, just really was looking forward to get, getting into qualifying to see what kind of pace we got in this car. I can kind of see this being more of a long run kind of car, so I wasn't expecting the best qualifying effort in the world here, and we're going to find out right now, though, where we are going to go as we get our qualifying effort underway. Actually, hitting the wall, coming to the start of my one and only lap here in qualifying, the goal being a 21.165 as we go through one and two down this back straightaway, and I actually got through turns one and two pretty well, better than I had in practice at all. So we go down into three and four, see if we can repeat what we uh, did the corners before and actually got through there pretty well as well. This is hands down my best lap of the weekend. And we go with a 21.296 and that puts us peak 24. So I was a little bit disappointed that we were still a ways down the order. But William Byron, Denny Hamlin is going to be our front row for this weekend. Here's to see rest of the qualifying order. We got Greg Biffle in the field, by the way, in the 21. He's not in the 62 car. I didn't get the number changed, but he's actually in the 44 car. We've also got J.J. Yaley driving the 51 this week in place of Zane Smith uh, as they will continue to kind of rotate throughout this season. Uh, as you can see, the Truck Series race later on Saturday. They were actually at Martinsville. Zane Smith picked up the victory. We will be checking the point standings for all three series at the conclusion of this episode. Instead of just Cup only, we will have Trucks and Xfinity updates. Xfinity at Richmond this weekend. Daniel Hemrick for colleague racing picked up the victory in the number 11 car seeing a lot of parody in all three series so far this season which has been fantastic to see now and we'll see what happens here in richmond let's get ready Happy Sunday, NASCAR fans. It's time for some short track racing here in Richmond, Virginia. We've seen many different winners already this season. The question is, will we see another today? We've only seen one repeat winner this year so far, Chris, and that was Joey Logano. There's some big names who haven't won yet in this new car that I think you have to watch out for today. Totally agree, Mike. I got my eye on that number 48 car today. He won here last year. It's been a rough start to the season for Bowman. I think he turns it around today. What do you think, Tony? Watch out for that four car of mine today, boys. Also, how about Greg Biffle being back in the car this weekend? Should be a fun watch. Let's head down trackside where the drivers are just about ready to get the racing action underway. Ready to go. I saw a comment uh, in a recent video that you should use the NASCAR 21 Ignition pre-race shows in the NASCAR Heat 5. That was an absolutely genius idea I didn't think of, so I thank you, and we're going to be using that probably for the rest of the career mode, uh, and at least implementing into it and expanding upon it here. Now, stories of the race are sometime soon, hopefully going to be done by the AI commentators, but not today. Unapproved body modification during qualifying for Michael McDowell, William Byron on pole. I think we have a good long run car today, so keep it clean on the short run for me. Yes, sir, I agree, but let's see what happens. 
We now have a name for our crew chief. We can refer to him now in the comments as Stevie Speed. So anytime a call goes wrong, we'll just blame the AI that's not even real. But nonetheless, we're racing here in Richmond from 24th starting position. Immediately, you see Greg Biffle in that number 44 right in front of us there. Great actual uh, uh, starting position for him after being out of the cup car uh, for quite some time here now. So you're going to see him not doing, obviously, the rest of the season, but he is going to be doing some races throughout the remainder of 2022. William Byron out in front on these opening moments. He's going to lead lap number one. He's got a team at a Chase Elliott up there joining him. Hendrick Motorsports has been pretty strong so far this season. We've seen Chase Elliott go to victory lane. Kyle Larson, uh, William Byron has been strong without a win. Alex Bowman is the only one that's really struggled. And I can confirm that Alex Bowman, uh, Brad Kozlowski, and a few other drivers have been given uh, a rating boost as I felt like they weren't very accurate. Uh, so you're going to see those drivers continue to improve and whatnot. Uh, uh, but other than that, anything else has not been changed in terms of ratings. But Kozlowski, Bowman, the big ones, and then some few select drivers as well. As you can see myself actually fading on this short run. My crew chief, Stevie Speed, told us, you know, to kind of keep the car in one piece on the short run. Just kind of keep care of it because we're going to struggle and... Boy, was he right. We were down to P28 here. It's actually a little bit of contact briefly there with the aid of Tyler Reddick. But the inside line is where you want to be. If you get up to that second lane, you're screwed here in Richmond. So I was fighting as hard as I could to keep it on the inside. But I was struggling on the short run to do that. Here we are three wide in the middle. We got the 38 of Gilliland actually going past me there. Rookie of the year contender against myself. So he is able to uh, take that position. And we're still really, really struggling here in these opening laps. But as these laps go on, it starts to benefit me quite a bit and I'm going to slowly start to kind of migrate my way back forwards here. You see myself up the inside of that 44 now of Greg Biffle. He had a little bit of contact there briefly with the 41 of Cole Custer uh, but now you can see we're starting to make progress. The only downside is Stage one, very, very short. It's only 16 laps, so you don't have a lot of time to make things happen, especially when your car kicks in only about 10 laps in. So here we are now, moving away forward into the top 25, Ross Chastain being the next objective to get past here, but we only had three laps to run him down at this point. William Byron already hitting two laps to go in this stage, and... Fortunately, Chastain's running all the way up the track, which makes it a lot easier for me to try and run him down. But I wouldn't quite get there. William Byron would win stage number one. We're down this back straightaway for the final time here towards turn three. Tenth place is about to cross the line and end the stage. There it is. P25. So we actually finish worse than what we qualified, which was a little bit uh, frustrating. However... We ran so few laps. We have plenty of fuel to get to the end of stage two. Nobody is going to actually come into the pit lane uh, in this front area. So Byron wins stage one over Harvick, Almarola, Cedric, uh, Bubba Wallace having a good race so far. Uh, rounding out the top ten was at number 18, Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, Toyota of Kyle Busch. JJ Yaley and Michael McDowell actually elect to come into the pit lane. Ready to go green then for stage number two. William Byron leads us back to the green. He has led from start to now current moment in this race. And I'm going to get aggressive here. We've gotten to the Cup Series by being aggressive. And we're going to continue that here in turn one. I felt like in the last episode, you know, being aggressive, making a statement against Ross Chastain. You're going to wreck me. I'm going to wreck you right back. So we don't want to be that uh, driver, that young driver that's going to openly get pushed around by other Cup Series veterans and whatnot there. As you can see myself being able to make a big gain on this restart now as we got the number five of Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson sometimes struggles here when it comes to Richmond race but he did win in real life in 2023 at this track and he won all the way back in what 2017 here uh, and I think it was overtime uh, against Martin Truex Jr. when Denny Hamlin ended up wrecking the 19 as well like coming to the final lap if I remember correctly uh, but nonetheless we are starting to make some headway as these tires continue to wear this car continues to get better than a lot of drivers around me up to P18 at this point behind my uh, boss of Denny Hamlin but the caution is going to come out Kevin Harvick was now out in front over Christopher Bell. Uh, William Byron had dropped a P6, but here's the replay of why. We're under caution. Tyler Reddick blows the tire, goes for a spin in turn three, hits the wall pretty hard. The 43 and the 50 get involved. That will end the day for the number eight of Tyler Reddick. So nobody again comes into the pit lane. So we all stay out and get ready to go back racing again. We're back underway, and you can see the top left, of course, we have a significant amount of more laps, 37 laps here in stage. 
stage two compared to the 16 that we just had in stage one there a little bit of contact with my boss of Denny Hamlin there were actually uh, three wide it was uh, the 15 of all people Garrett Smithley I think that forced it three wide and caught us all off guard and Garrett Smithley the Daytona 500 winner for Rick Ware Racing is into towards the top 15 if you guys remember he won that 500 and Rick Ware Racing at that moment said okay we're gonna keep Garrett Smithley in that car full time to try and remain in the top 30 in the standings to get into the playoffs there as we nearly wrecked the 99 of Daniel Suarez uh, however that 15 car is now falling out of that top 30 so it's not looking very good for him there you see the 51 of JJ Yaley uh, a new paint scheme as well with the actual Yaley branding there thanks to Sanok again who's been coming in clutch with some paint schemes and whatnot uh, so we do hold him off though for that 20th spot now we try to run down at that number 12 of Ryan Bellaney. Kevin Harvick was driving away, so once Byron lost the lead, he kind of struggled to re you know, stay up there. He was losing position, so that car is certainly getting worse in dirty air. As you can see myself now, up the inside of the 99 com scope machine of Daniel Suarez here, 17 laps ago in stage at number two, and struggling to gain some track position here, but then we would start to kind of get back on a roll again here. Now, up the inside of the 99, clear through three out of turn four, so another spot gain. That's P19. Now, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, just a couple of the cars in front of us here of this group before, Alex now. Bowman and oh, Garrett Smith. Clear continuing to hold his own up there now up the inside of that 12 nearly some contact with the Menards Ford Mustang now down into turn three he stays clear and these battles continue now Bellaney would actually be able to get past the five and the 48 I'm trying to follow him through passing Kyle Larson and Bowman who are up on the outside but yeah you can certainly tell that the longer we make laps or the more laps that we put on these tires it's just benefiting me so much compared to the AI here so it's not very often you get a really good car on a long run but this is certainly one of the days where we just have a car that's benefiting so much from a long run and we're really hoping that we don't see the continuous trend so far of the season where we kind of have uh, some cautions that come out in stage three I would rather have it just stay green the whole time Larson actually catches me off guard gets my left rear so he'll pass me back for p17 so we dropped to p18 but it wasn't long until I would actually get back up the inside of him here so 10 laps ago in the stage it will make a nice overtake here side by side with that number five down this back straight away towards turn three. Bellaney now trying to run down that 15 uh, of Garrett Smithley, but we get clear of Larson on the exit of four. So here we are being able to focus once again uh, on these two drivers in front of us. Bellaney would in fact get past Garrett Smithley here. So here's an opportunity uh, shortly thereafter for myself to go in after the attack on that number 15 who runs all the way to that third, fourth lane even. So it's an easy pass once they do that. So clear for P16, three wide behind me, which is what you like to see. And we would drive away from all these guys and now on lap 33 of 37 here up the inside of that number 12 of Blaney P15 in stage 2 would be absolutely awesome after what we started P25 at the end of stage 1 there so I was pretty happy with this so passing the 12 for 15th Corey LaJoy had now joined the party. He had passed Larson, Burton, etc., and had now gotten past Blaney, had gotten to me on the final lap of the stage. Kevin Harvick wins stage number two. We head down the back straight away for the final time, still looking for our first stage points of the season. Could have had some in mid-Ohio if I didn't focus enough on, uh, you know, wrecking the one of Ross Chastain. But we end up P15. Our teammate of Bubba Wallace, uh, who was a lot better in stage one, kind of faded there in stage two. He's down to P13. Martin Truex Jr. picking up the final stage point. Point. If this goes green in stage three, I think we got a really good shot. Yeah, I agree. Unlikely to stay green though with these tires. Please ask the 45 to not compromise me here. You hear Bubba Wallace Radio, my teammate, asking for me to not compromise him on this restart. The message was relayed to me. I wasn't planning to send a three wide on Bubba anyways. I know he's my teammate, and we got to think a big picture, especially for a four-star team, a small team that's still trying to progress up the level here in the Cup Series for the second season of this 2311 racing team. And we get a good restart. P14, Bubba gets a great restart. Logano's now out in front, actually, over Kevin Harvick. Uh, but, you know, we've talked about it already, these... Uh, 
uh, newer teams with Trackhouse 2311 Racing, the expanded teams, you know, of RFK, etc. Th those kind of things. These teams have found success so far this season with Trackhouse with the Ross Chastain victory at Las Vegas, uh, but we have also seen the RFK team have some decent success there with uh, especially Kurt Busch, but Busch has had his moments. Kozlowski's kind of struggled uh, in his first season with this team expansion. Obviously, them going from a two-car team to a whole expansion with bringing in Kozlowski and then going to three cars. It's a big, uh, you know, ask for that team to do a lot here and make the playoffs even. And then 23-11 racing. It's been hit or miss for both cars so far, but you can see myself struggling on the short run on this new set of tires again. Kind of like what we expected. My boss man, Denny Hamlin, just behind me. He's not had a great day in his home circuit. A track that has treated him very well in the past, but it's just not looking very good for Denny Hamlin here today now. As you can see myself throwing a bit of a block there on the 16 of AJ Elmendinger for P17. Harvard continuing to lead the way now, but if it stays green, I'd be curious to see uh, how these AI are able to manage lap traffic. I spoke too soon because the caution is going to fly with 32 laps to go. If it stays green from here, we can still get a very nice green flag run. Uh, so that's kind of what I was hoping for. A replay of what happened is Cole Custer in the number 41 car. Out of turn two, you're going to notice right there, looks like a tire blows and around he goes and he's going to get a hit there from Suarez, a big T-bone hit from the 43 and Chassane, the 31, uh, the 34 all up here to be involved. No pit stops necessary though, however, because everybody can make it to the end of this race. We're back underway again at this point. Harvick out in front over Logano as he tries to, of course, run away on this restart. William Byron joining him on that front row. We know that 24 has some speed. I made a big three-wide move up the inside of the 48 of Alex Bowman and kind of compromised him and give an opportunity to my boss of Denny Hamlet to gain a few positions as well. Into the 14th position we go. Chase Elliott up the inside of Kurt Busch and that uh, Ford Mustang Monster Energy number 60 car. As you can see, I actually unfortunately lose a bit of connection with these guys here over the next few moments. That 20 of Christopher Bell now to the lead. We've seen Bell in position this season to win and unfortunately things didn't quite work because of a tire failure for him but it wasn't long until uh, Kevin Harvick would actually get himself back out in front here with 21 laps to go as we continue to run in P14. Bubba Wallace there one spot in front of us. Both of us uh, showcasing some decent speed for this 23-11 racing team today. Uh, as you can see though, 20 to go. Here comes Brad Kozlowski up by inside that number 6 RFK Ford must saying trying to take the position now he might be marching his way through the field here he might go and be the best running rfk car momentarily if he can get past that number 60 car and i think he might just do that because that six car is moving very very quickly now so pay attention to him and you can see 15 to go still running p15 so we hadn't lost anything more but there's kozlowski now going for a move on the inside of the 2004 cup series champion of kurt bush and he would in fact get past him and now kurt bush down to p14 as myself with 12 laps to go battling again with Corey LaJoy just like we were at the end of stage number two. Harvick leading the way but as we say that he loses the lead on the track map you see it there Byron to the lead as they're now working their way through lap traffic lap 94 less than 10 laps to go at this point in the race and it looks like it might stay green for almost 30 laps here at the end of this race which is fantastic sight here uh, as you can see myself closing in coming to five to go right there on the back of that 60 of Kurt Busch we might have a chance for P14 Byron continues to lead he's hoping for no yellow uh, obviously now as we have a move up the inside of the 60 right there leaning on his left rear actually a little bit of contact there on that uh, left rear quarter panel of Kurt Busch but an opportunity maybe right here in one and two if I throttle up early enough yes we do we get clear of the 60 of Kurt Busch and actually uh, he fights back briefly won't have enough though and Corey LaJoy as well will get past at 60 so the fight between myself and LaJoy is is about to heat up here in these closing moments. Now, coming to the final lap here in Richmond, we made it a green flag run, a great green flag run, and LaJoy up my inside as we head down into turn one. Byron leads the way into three and four. He is going to become another different winner this season. It looks like, yes, Byron out of turn four wins in Richmond. We're going to get in behind the seven. We've gotten here on aggression. We're going to get aggressive for 14th place, even. They're a bump to the back of the seven. It's going to be side by side to the line, drag racing to the line. Who's going to get it? We do. We get P14 here in Richmond. I I decided to get aggressive. It's with Corey LaJoy. He's proven himself. He's not afraid to get aggressive. So I decided, you know what? Let me get aggressive on you there. Every point matters, especially in our situation. 
but in his too. Every point matters for that team, and I just proved uh, who was a bit more willing to go after that one single point there. Redick at the bottom of the grid there, 40th place, unfortunately, with that uh, DNF here today. Here's the points, by the way, and trucks, uh, and we will check the Xfinity Series points and Cup Series points to wrap up this episode. We are in a kind of a fun portion of calendar for this career mode. As you can see, uh, Martinsville uh, was the most recent race uh, for the truck series, but that's where Xfinity is going, and that is where, well, we are going in the next episode. So I'm very excited for that because uh, I love Martinsville. But you see on the right bottom there, we are 22 points out of the playoffs right now. Bubba Wallace, our teammate, nine points out. Kurt Busch there just in front of us, 17 below the cut line. RFK drivers are in the mix aside from Brad Kozlowski currently. However, that is going to wrap things up for us here today in the NASCAR Heat 5 Next Gen Mod Career Mode. You guys have been awesome with the support on it so far, and I appreciate it so, so much. And that is going to wrap things up right here uh, as you see one final run through the overall standings. Bowman 28th place, rough to say the least. Kozlowski in 32nd. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for me. I'll see you guys in the next one for what will hopefully be a fun and wild Martinsville Paperclip weekend. Have a great day, everybody.